Hello, everyone, and welcome to Long for Truth. My name is Daniel Long, and sitting next to me is my lovely wife, Robin. Hi, everyone. So today we are going to be asking the question, does Ephesians 4.11 allow for women pastors? And some of you might be saying, what? Ephesians 4.11 allow for women pastors? It has nothing to do with women pastors. And that's right. our point. We've gotten a lot of comments on the last video about women pastors that we did that was called Women Can Be Pastors Too, What Does the Bible Say? We've gotten several comments on that video about Ephesians chapter 4 and us not addressing Ephesians chapter 4, 11. Right. And uh, we've gotten comments on our Facebook page as well. And so we're going to address Ephesians 4, about that for 11. A while. Sure. So what, what is the argument for that verse? So most of the people just say that Paul did not specifically mention a gender when mm -hmm. he's talking about these verses. Therefore, it's open to women. So we're just going to, why don't we go ahead and read those couple of verses. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to put everything in context Yep. Um, and hopefully answer some questions for the people that had questions. So go ahead and read the verses. Sure. So we're in Ephesians 4, verses 11 and 12. And he gave the apostles the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. And so the argument is what again? Because Paul did not mention any genders, he didn't say he and he gave men as apostles or anything like that. So therefore, women can be apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, and teachers. And we didn't really even address these verses in our video because they don't have anything to do with the qualifications of right. a pastor. So why don't we take a quick look at the passages that Paul wrote that do have something to do with this topic sure. of women pastors? And just to put everything in, um, kind of paint a picture here. So Paul wrote Ephesians in what, around AD 60, I think, 60, 62, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. about five to seven years prior to that, he wrote First Corinthians, where yeah. he addressed women in the church. So that's the first passage that we're going to read. And it's chapter 14. Chapter 14, um, starting in verse 13. 33? Uh, yes, yeah, verse okay. 33. So why so don't we go there? Sure. Um, starting in verse 33, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. As in all the churches of the saints, the women should keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but should be in submission, as the law also says. If there's anything they desire to learn, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is shameful for a woman to speak in church. Or was it from you that the word of God came? Or are you the only ones it has reached? If anyone thinks that he is a prophet or spiritual, he should acknowledge that the things I am writing to you are a command of the Lord. If anyone does not recognize this, he is not recognized. So, my brothers, earnestly desire to prophesy, and do not forbid speaking in tongues. But all things should be done decently and in order." So in the context, um, this is talking about spiritual gifts, but Paul is addressing um, women speaking in church here. And one of the things I want to note here is what Paul says in verse 33. He says, as in all the churches uh, of the saints, the women should keep silent in the churches. This isn't just one. And I've had people say, well, you're this is you're just using uh, uh, this misunderstood passage to promote women being silent in churches. Right. And you have to understand, you see, this is talking about the Corinthian church where the women were out of control. Yes, where the women they, were out of control. But right. what does Paul say here? He says, as in all the churches of the saints. And I don't understand why people kind of leave that part out when they're talking about uh, this passage of Scripture. Sure. So before we put Ephesians 4.11 back into its context, mm -hmm. I wanted Robin to read a portion of a commentary on 1 Corinthians 14. Now, this comes from the first the uh, Concordia commentary series, uh, and it's written by Gregory Lockwood. So why don't you just read that portion? Because I just think sure. it really goes well with uh, with this passage of Scripture. Sure. Um, just as not all are apostles, not all are prophets, 
So not all are pastors and teachers, and not only women are excluded from the pastor office, but also most men. For most men have not been called to the office, nor have they been given sufficient aptitude in teaching. The ministry can be difficult enough in these turbulent times, even for men who are apt to teach. This aptitude is the one qualification on Paul's list of qualifications for pastors, which is not required of every Christian man. Since God has called the church into existence through the gospel, he has every right to select those whom he chooses to be pastors and to establish such qualifications as he desires pastors to have. Just as in Israel, the 11 other tribes had no right to cry foul because God selected only the Levites to serve at his sanctuary and only the sons of Aaron to be his priests, so Christians have no right to criticize God for limiting the pastoral office to those who meet his qualifications, including that of gender. It is not inconsistent for the God of the gospel also to establish such an order in his church. God is not a God of disorder. I think that's a really good uh, commentary for that portion of Scripture. I agree. So um, let's go ahead then and put Ephesians 4 back into its context, and let's find out what this passage is actually talking about, because we want to reiterate, re, reiterate, <laughs> reiterate, okay, we reiterate want, when we, we want, reiterate, we want to reiterate that um, this passage is not a passage of talking about the qualifications of a pastor that comes in another place. And in addition, one more thing that I want to mention before we look at the passage, and we said this over and over again in our last video, we are not saying that women cannot be in ministry. We are not saying that women can't teach other women in the church or teach other ch or teach children in the church or have other ministries. We are not saying that women can't present the gospel outside of church to men. We're not saying anything like that. We believe that they can. What we do, what we don't believe is that women can be pastors, have the office of pastor, because that is not in the qualifications for pastor. If God wanted that to be so, he would have made it extremely clear and not so, you know, and not vague and Very. so where you have to take passages of scripture and, and kind of, you know, twist them I to agree. make them say. He would have had to make it very clear mm -hmm. because um, the whole Old Testament, all religious leaders were men. Mm -hmm. So he would have been bringing on an entirely, yes. he already brought on an entirely new era with the New Testament mm -hmm. and how elevated women were. But mm -hmm. you're right. He would have made it. It, crystal clear. Crystal clear. You wouldn't have to jump through hoops to try to make your case that women can be pastors. You wouldn't have to use a, a passage like Ephesians 4.11 to make your case that women can and, be pastors. And he wouldn't have said things like women should be silent in church. Exactly. All right. So, Robin, why don't you start with, with uh, Ephesians 4 uh, verse 1 and let's put 11, back in its context, let's find okay. out what this whole passage is talking about. Sure. So Ephesians 4 is all about unity in the body of Christ. I'm going to start reading in verse 1. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it says, when he ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. 
Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped, when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. Very good. And these gifts that are given to the body are people gifts. In other words, these aren't spiritual gifts. These are gifts, um, offices that Christ has given to his church. And every commentary that you and I have looked at, and, and I've got dozens of commentaries but every commentary that I looked at said that the the apostles there and mentioned in verse 11, he gave some, you know, he gave the apostles, the ESV says the apostles, but a better translation and uh, is, is he gave some some to be or some as apostles. Okay. Um, that's just a better translation. And, and I don't know Greek, but I'm just going by what the commentators have said. And that would be guys like Linsky and even uh, Walvard and Zuck uh, in the Bible knowledge commentary. So there, there are, uh, it's just better trans. I think the new King James and the King James and the NASB say some to be apostles. Okay. But anyway, the point is, is that these apostles, most commentators that I've read have said that they are the big A apostles. We're talking about the apostles of Christ, those whom Christ called specifically to the office of apostle and those mm-hmm. whom Christ um, called to plant the, the New Testament church, to start mm-hmm. the New they Testament the church. Right? Yes. Uh, what does it say in Ephesians 2.20, uh, the, uh, built on the foundation mm-hmm. of the apostles yes. and the prophets. So the apostles have already been mentioned in Ephesians. And so uh, that is, uh, at least from what I've studied and looked at, that is uh, right. the apostles mentioned here. Now, within a year or two, Paul is going to write first Timothy after he wrote Ephesians. So you had first Corinthians first, then you had Ephesians and then you have first Timothy. All right. So why would Paul have to specifically mention the gender of a shepherd pastor in the middle of, uh, first Corinthians where he talked about women Mm -hmm. in church Mm -hmm. and first Timothy, where he talks about not only women in church, but the qualifications of an overseer. Exactly. Let's look at uh, First Timothy, and let's let's look at those qualifications once again. I think that's something that we need to do. Okay, so we're in First Timothy chapter, chapter two. two. Let's start in verse eight, shall we? Okay. I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarreling. Likewise, also that women should adorn themselves in respectable apparel with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. One of the things that I want to mention before you move on is where Paul says, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. Like you said, this is sandwiched in between 1 Corinthians then you have Ephesians, and now you have 1 Timothy. And Paul is saying the same exact thing in 1 Timothy that he said in 1 Corinthians before he wrote Ephesians. Correct. So that would mean if he wanted to say something about, you know, if, if, if the, the passage in 1 Corinthians where he says for women to remain silent was just for the Corinthians, he would not have put that there in First Timothy. I agree. And for someone to take the passage in Ephesians verses 11 and 12 and try to use those as justification for women pastors, they have to jump through a whole mm-hmm. lot of scriptural hoops to get yeah, to that point. So exactly. they have to they have to figure out how they're going to um, get rid of that First Corinthians passage. So mm-hmm. that passage was just to specific women. And then they have to go to First Timothy and they have to jump through that hoop, not mm-hmm. even to mention Adam and Eve yeah. and, and what God said about that. So Exactly. Um, and again, we have to reiterate, and, I, and I've said this even in the comments, the 
the the the passage, the entire passage in in Ephesians chapter four has nothing to do with the qualifications of You're a right. pastor. So why don't we go ahead and read what those qualifications are? Sure. So we're in First Timothy chapter three, starting in verse one. The saying is trustworthy. If anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent, but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well, with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may be puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into a snare of the devil. One of the things I wanted to mention as well is that the qualifications of the pa- of a pastor are mentioned not just here in 1 Timothy chapter 3, but they're also mentioned in Titus chapter 1. So that's really important. So, so it almost kind of puts like a a a, a a a a double stamp of a you know right. of what the qualifications of a pastor mm-hmm. are this is what he says in Titus chapter 1 this is why i left you in the starting in verse 5 this is why i left you in crete so that you might put what remained in order and appoint elders in every town as i directed you if anyone is above reproach the husband of one wife and his children are believers and not open to the charge of debauchery or insubordination for an overseer as god's steward must be above reproach. He must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or a drunkard or violent or greedy for gain, but hospitable, a lover of good, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. He must hold firm to the trustworthy word as taught, so that he may be able to give instructions in sound doctrine and also rebuke those who contradict it. Notice what Paul says here. He says the same thing in Titus that he does in First Timothy. Timothy that a husband uh, that a pastor is to be the husband of one wife how can a woman be the husband of one wife and he mentions that in two places in order to make ephesians chapter 4 11 and other passages like that mean that women can be pastors you literally have to jump through hoops you have to twist the scriptures to make them say something that they don't say and you have two very uh solid passages that give clear instruction about the qualifications of the pastor. And both of them say husband of one wife. In Titus, Paul's not talking about women pastors there either. And in First Timothy, he makes it very clear that women are not to be pastors. Again, we're not saying that women can't be in ministry. We have wonderful ministry opportunities. Mm-hmm. We're saying that Christ has made it clear through his apostles that women are not to be uh, pastors or have authority over a man. That means in Sunday, and we would even say, even in a Sunday school class, women are not to be teaching men. But women can teach other women in the church. Women can teach children in the church. And as we said, women can preach the gospel outside of church. Um, It's, this is, this is just specifically um, directed towards the office of shepherd. So I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it's cleared up any questions. Feel free to comment um, if you have further questions. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye.